Welcome, friends, to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and along with Pastor Wesley, we serve the United Methodist Church of New Lenox, and we welcome you to this time where we can join together to grow closer in love of God and neighbor. Take a deep breath, breathing in God's presence, breathing out the concerns of the day, that we may know God is with us, that we may come to the cross, lay our burdens down, and be raised up to new and eternal life, now and always. Hear the affirmation in our petition. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your need in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. It's Isaiah 58, 10 through 11. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. Luke 11, 2-4 Friends, our theme this week is making room for God. How has that gone? Have you been intentional about trying to make room for God? Right now, as you're listening to this, you have made room for God. My encouragement to you is that you focus on this. Now, it doesn't mean you can't be out and about. It doesn't mean you can't be on a walk. All of that's fine. Turn your phone off, turn the TV off, turn the radio off. Just for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, focus. Make room. You're already doing so good. I'm so proud of you and I encourage you daily. Good job. Feel proud of yourself and what you've done to help you grow into the best person you can be filled with love and peace and hope and joy. And then ask, what else can I do? How else can I make room for God? So let's think about that as we read From the Interior Mountain by Simon Peter Iredale. Solitude is obviously intended to be far more than just being physically alone. It is the way we form a habit of retreat, creating a space and a time when God can speak to us. Perhaps you are fortunate enough to have some place in your house that could become a place of retreat. Some people have a favorite walk that becomes a prayer walk. Every large city, despite the noise and the crowds, has places of great solitude and peace. Often city center churches are examples of this. What is certain is that if we create a place where we can regularly turn to God, God will meet us there. There. As Ama Synclesia said, it is possible to be a solitary in one's mind while living in a crowd. Time spent with God is solitude will always bring a harvest. The problems we have outside the solitude will seem different when we return to them refreshed and strengthened. The sure sense of our relationships with Christ that solitude brings, spills over into everything else we do. When Moses came down from his solitude on Mount Sinai, his face shone, Exodus 34, 29 through 35. 
For you too, solitude can be a place of transfiguration, a meeting place with the living God. Amen. Have you made solitude part of your practice? We're very blessed here as we have a beautiful campus that is a great place to experience solitude. Now, generally speaking, when I go to the church early in the morning, I am almost always the first person there most days of the week. I sit in the sanctuary, just the morning light coming in, all by myself, no one usually else in the entire church. And that's where I have some solitude. Many of you and many people come out, sit outside. I usually take a walk around the campus at the church and enjoy the trees and the birds and the animals. I walk the prayer path through the woods. Beautiful, beautiful things. In rare moments at my home, when no one else is around, sometimes I'll just sit. Actually, in the morning, if I can get away with it, I get up early, I give my daughter her five o'clock medicine, get ready, and I get a cup of coffee and I just sit and enjoy 15, 20 minutes sometimes. Solitude. And again, when we come to God, where it's just us, we leave those experiences. And it's the same way with any, uh, any relationship. My wife and I spend time together alone without the kids. It's a little easier during the school year when they're all in school. That's a special time. And when we come back to the noise and the busyness and the whining and crying and tiredness and all the good and bad that comes with having kids, that helps center us a little bit. Encourage you to find some solitude, especially if you are a busy, busy person. Some do it better than others, but the busier you are, I really believe the more important solitude can be. Our scripture reading today comes from Luke chapter 2, 36 through 38. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, who belonged to the tribe of Asher. She was very old. After she married, she lived with her husband for seven years. She was now an 84-year-old widow. She never left the temple area, but worshipped God with fasting and prayer night and day. She approached that very moment and began to praise God and to speak about Jesus to everyone who was looking forward to the redemption of Israel. This story about Anna is great because it, it talks really about persistence and the, the kind of long game. And I think that's so important right now in in a world that's filled with immediates. Again, you know, we have this, we, 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 even if you even if you think, you know, I, I've got a good sense of the last hundred years, that last hundred years, modernity, is so different than the thousands and thousands of years of human history before that, where everything took so much time. Think about even in the last, 50, 25 years, we have instant access to everything, especially here in the United States. Any information, any book you want to read, you can have it right now. Anything you need to buy, you can have it probably within a day. Anything you want to learn, you can go online and learn it. If you want food, there's a thousand options. They'll bring it to your house. You can have everything done for you. And so we're, we're used to this kind of instant gratification. I want something, I buy it. We have entire industries built up around that. But here, Anna, 
And I've known people like this who were married young and unfortunately their spouse died after a few years, no children. And they never remarried, but they lived powerful lives. Anna was one of these people. So she spent, I mean, if she got, who knows, she got married at 15, 16, 60 years of her life praying and fasting. And near the very end, I assume she didn't live too much longer, especially in those days, 84 was very well lived. She came face to face with the risen Christ. Or with the incarnate Christ, excuse me. He wasn't risen, he was a baby. (laughs) She came face to face with God incarnate. That's more theologically appropriate. Friends, it may seem like you've been waiting a long time. Sometimes it's persistence and willingness to wait that leads to the most important experiences of God, the divine, and Christ in our lives. Friends, today is our time to petition, to bring to God whatever's on our hearts, our needs. God cares about you. Bring to God your needs now. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, I leave you with these words from John Wesley. O Lord, may nothing dwell in my soul but your pure love alone, till my every thought, word, and act be love. Yes, Lord, may your love possess me whole. You're my joy, my treasure, my crown. Until next time, friends, God bless. Goodbye. Amen.